Some 40,000 people are directly and indirectly employed, converting 5,000 acres of earthquake-susceptible, sinking mud on the edge of Mexico City into a gleaming international travel hub. I'm standing at the very heart of what will be the first passenger terminal. Mexican architects have teamed up with world experts in airport design to ensure the highest international standards. This X shape will be the first of two passenger terminals. It's designed to intertwine Mexico's ancient symbolism with the ultimate in cutting edge design and sustainable technology. The first stage projected for 2020 will be paid for by a combination of Mexican and international public and private sector funding. The cost? 13.2 billion US dollars to complete the first stage. Miguel Ángel Núñez Soto is Director General of Mexico City's airport group. He believes the country's economy stands to benefit significantly. El futuro de nuestro país se mide por la dimensión de la puerta que podamos construir para alcanzarlo. Estamos ante la obra de infraestructura nacional más importante de la época contemporánea, diseñada para ser la puerta nueva de México al mundo y para el mundo. Esta palanca nos permitirá ampliar nuestra capacidad de intercambio comercial, turístico y cultural y posicionará a nuestro país en un lugar destacado en la economía mundial. The first aeroplane is expected to take off from the new airport in 2020, when the first stage will be inaugurated. Completion of President Enrique Peña Nieto's legacy mega construction is projected for 2070. La primera etapa contempla tres pistas de uso simultáneo para transportar a más de 50 millones de personas, mientras que en su segunda fase contará con un total de seis pistas para atender a 120 millones de pasajeros anuales. Por su magnitud, diseño y beneficio social, el nuevo aeropuerto será una obra trascendental, emblema del México moderno. But not everyone sees President Peña Nieto's legacy project as a gift to the nation. This is Ignacio del Valle, one of the many farmers who've been fighting against different airports being built on their land for the past 17 years. He's one of hundreds of communal landowners of the municipality of Atenco, whose land has been pinpointed as one of the best locations for a new airport to serve the capital. 17 years ago, they first defended their rights against President Vicente Fox's plans for an airport. In 2002, their resistance seemed to triumph, and the first project was cancelled. However, in 2006, the fight was back on. At the time, Enrique Peña Nieto, now president, was the head of the state of Mexico. He ordered his state police force to control the protesters in Atenco. This march commemorates the anniversary of what has become known as Bloody May. 208 protesters were imprisoned, dozens disappeared, and women described how they had been raped and tortured by state police. The National Human Rights Commission later confirmed 23 cases of sexual aggression against the women of Atenco. President Enrique Peña Nieto later admitted that the police operation he ordered had unintentionally resulted in the violation of human rights. This series of incidents is often referred to by international human rights experts as an example of state repression and a lack of guarantee of human rights in Mexico. Back home in Atenco, Ignacio takes me to one of the airport access motorways that has carved through communal agricultural land. Ignacio was one of the 208 people imprisoned in 2006 after the bloody confrontation with federal police. He remembers how he was tortured and kept in solitary confinement for four years until a judge ruled he had been imprisoned under false pretenses. Today, Ignacio is more determined than ever to defend his ancestral land. 
todo ese territorio es sagrado en este vivir para decir vale tanto económicamente, no tiene precio y no se vende. Ignacio takes me to meet Nieves Rodríguez, who now lives in the shadows of the airport motorway. Her home has become a symbol of the resistance movement. Nieves had a motorbike accident swerving on the mud around the unmarked construction site. Three fractures and three months later, she's still not back to work, nor has she received any compensation. In any moment that I'm not there, and above all, I have to go to work, but I have to go back soon, because in any moment they're going to take me out of my house. And the machines are already here, they're 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 already here, la casa, ¿no? Me ofreció 200 por mi casa, dice que es lo que valía. Y si no aceptaba yo, entonces se, este, me iban a expropiar. Y aquí donde vemos asfalto, ¿tenía usted vecinos y otras sí. casas? Sí. Aquí, inclusive aquí donde está el poste había una casa. Había una casa. Cuando yo vi que la empezaron a entrar, la tirar, yo entré en una depresión. Los del gobierno. Los del gobierno estoy, me da mucho coraje contra ellos porque nada de lo que dicen es verdad. Prometen muchas cosas y no, 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 nada, no, no es verdad lo que dicen. Porque una persona que no tiene estudios no puede, no pueden dar trabajo en el aeropuerto porque ellos traen su gente preparada. Nosotros lo único que nos pueden dar es para barrenderos, pero mucha gente la, la han convencido a base de puras mentiras. It's not just Nieves who feels she's been lied to. Many of the landowners in the region feel they were tricked by the authorities. It was during Enrique Peña Nieto's time as governor of the state of Mexico that the Federal Water Authority, Conagua, set about buying the land in the Texcoco Lake region with the promise of restoring dried up lakes. This was part of a major environmental project to restore the viability of the whole Valley of Mexico City. But once the federal authorities had acquired the land and earmarked it as an ecological reserve, Enrique Peña Nieto had become president, and the land was turned over to his legacy megaproject instead. The major concern is that all these good environmental intentions, founded in real need, will be replaced by an urbanization project that will bring social unrest and environmental damage to the Central Valley of Mexico. Del que Dr. Fernando Cordoba Tapia mm. is an mm. investigator at the National mm. Autonomous mm. University. Mm. He headed up a group of independent researchers mm. to evaluate the environmental impact of the new airport construction. In the country, who resolves the problem of impact of a project like this is the federal government. Not only do you have the federal government evaluating itself, but the document that would theoretically be the objective is a member of the federal government. ¿No? Entonces eso hace que muchos de los impactos no se declaran, no se dice bien, no se detalla mucho qué se hace ¿no? y eso hace que básicamente el proyecto termine imponiéndose. ¿no? Entonces cuando presentan el nuevo aeropuerto una de las cosas que se insistía mucho es que este nuevo proyecto no iba a tener expropiación de tierras ¿no? y lo vendían como un beneficio o como una, una gran ventaja cuando más bien lo que hubo fue una compraventa engañosa en lo que básicamente a la gente vendió sus tierras, les habían prometido un lago y resulta que en términos reales ahora va a haber un aeropuerto. ¿no? Fernando explained what his research had uncovered about the likely effects for people like Nieves and Ignacio, who live in the immediate vicinity of the construction and whose land is earmarked to become the commercial and hotel corridor that will serve the airport. Ellos se van a topar con muchísima presión porque se vayan de sus tierras, eh, van a tener... Eh, desabasto de agua y van a tener un incremento en las inundaciones que ven año con año, ¿no? digamos eso en términos incluso a corto plazo. Lo que no van a permitir es que se inunde el aeropuerto y al no permitir el, el que se inunde el aeropuerto lo que va a pasar es que lo que sí se va a inundar son las zonas aledañas. Mexico City Airport's 24-7 efficiency is absolutely key to the tourism industry, which according to government figures 
represented 8.7% of GDP in 2017. Mexico's tourism minister, Maestro Enrique de la Madrid Cordero, recently announced that Mexico rose to be the sixth most visited destination in the world in 2017. The new airport will provide four times the capacity of the existing airport, which has struggled inadequately against fast-rising demand since the 90s when it reached its capacity. Con el éxito que está teniendo el turismo en nuestro país, con el crecimiento tan acelerado, no podemos permitir que la infraestructura se volviera un obstáculo para seguir creciendo. En México tenemos cerca de 68 millones de llegadas de pasajeros a nuestro país al año. Y de esas, el 30% llegan a este aeropuerto de la Ciudad de México. Y son los que llegan por avión los que explican el 80% de los ingresos que recibe México del turismo en nuestro país. El visitante aéreo es fundamental para mejorar el nivel de vida de la gente. Back at the terminal construction site, engineers and workers are enjoying the challenges this mega project poses. They're proud to be working on what promises to set a world precedent in sustainable airport architecture. Engineer Joaquin Loya is the production manager. He highlights the key environmental features the first terminal will include. Bueno, eh, su principal función es este, ser una columna para una losa espacial que está diseñada para descargar precisamente ahí todas las cargas que trae esa, esa losa. Número dos, eh, pues son captaciones de luz directa, natural, que es una función también muy, muy importante. Y número tres, captación pluvial. Van a ser unos embudos que, donde van a captar agua también para ser reutilizada. While the construction itself is bursting with these environmentally friendly elements to minimize emissions and maximize the use of solar energy and rainfall, there is a big difference between that and real sustainability for the region. Government officials have declined to give interviews because of the political climate in the lead up to July's elections. Sustentabilidad real incluye eh, el contexto social y ambiental de la región en la que te estás, eh, en la que te estás poniendo. ¿no? Eh, entonces, en ese sentido, no, eso claramente es e insustentable en todos los aspectos un aeropuerto en esa región. While some of the secondary effects on the region are yet to be felt, for some communities, their ecosystem will never be the same again. Mining companies are destroying entire hills in order to provide the cobalt and volcanic rock needed for the airport construction. Este proyecto que es de muerte, definitivamente es de muerte, es un ecocidio, es un nicho ecológico. La impotencia de ver nuestro, nuestros sitios que nos dan identidad, pues se siente una impotencia. Una rabia muy grande. El gran problema del, del proyecto es que lo están poniendo en una ciudad que está a punto de colapsar en todos los sentidos. Lo que menos necesitamos es invertir en su crecimiento en términos urbanos. Yo creo que los grandes intereses son tanto políticos como económicos. Lo que vamos a ver por él, la generación de ese aeropuerto va a ser muy grande en términos ambientales y sociales para los 20 millones de personas que vivimos en esta ciudad. ¿no? It's too soon for the effects of the airport to be felt by those of us who live in the nearby capital. But for locals like Nieves, life will almost certainly never be the same. And I can't help thinking that someday even her home, the last bastion of resistance against this access road, will one day be a memory.